want you to uh, open your Bibles, obviously. Book of 1 John, chapter 4. 1 John, chapter 4. First John chapter 4, starting in verse 7. We're, we don't have a lot of time, but we still want to go over this this morning. I like Brother Roy said, we sung the song. Today is our theme about love being Valentine's weekend. And so, you know, we want to learn what real love is. So this morning we're going to read this this morning. First John chapter 4, starting in verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another for the for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Wherein is love? Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also to love one another. Amen. Amen. Lord, we ask you to bless the reading of your word. Well, this morning, I just want us to kind of skim over a little bit little history of uh hey, there there was a valentine you know there was a saint valentine mm -hmm. and uh he was in uh, uh wrote in rome 200 a.d he cared about christians and so at that time old uh, claudius uh the emperor claudius ii he was against marriage because he felt felt especially for his soldiers because he felt that it was going to take them away from battle and have them worried about their their home life and their their family and all that so he he actually banned marriage and all that at that time and so here uh saint valentine he secretly married them and he, you know he wanted to make sure that the church had had founded on marriage and, and love the way it ought to be the way that the lord and you know ordained the church to be but saint valentine he was put in prison he was tortured and he was uh killed for this thing that he did, you know, to, to do the marriage ceremony. So that's just a little history on him. Now I want you to turn to John, not St. John, but John, chapter 21. John chapter 21. Starting in verse 15 of uh, chapter 21. So when they had dined, Jesus saith unto Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. And he saith to him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord. Thou knowest that I love thee, he saith unto him, Feed my sheep. And he saith unto him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved, because he had said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Stop and think about that. Jesus asked him that three times. But you see, Peter was not in the right frame of mind. Peter was thinking of the of the word in Greek that's phileo, so to be friendship, to be a brotherhood. And that's not what Jesus is talking about. Jesus is talking about an, an agape love. You know, we're to love one another. And that's what he was talking about here. And so that's why he asked him three times plus two. It kind of reminded Peter about what he did to Jesus. Remember, he denied Jesus three times. Now, this took place after Jesus' resurrection. And they were having breakfast one morning, and that's when Jesus brought this up to him. So, you know, he's talking to Peter about having a, an agape love. So it's, it's what he's referring to. Jesus wanted Peter to love 
unconditionally. And you know why? Because Peter was to lead the church. Peter was going to be, you know, the leader of the church. He wanted to make sure, Jesus wanted to make sure that Peter knew exactly what type of love it is. You know, this is not a country club. We're not having just, you know, a good old time sitting around talking about, you know, the Bible and, and God and all that. This is worship. This is church. We're here to worship our Lord and Savior. So as the leader of the church, you know, Jesus wanted to make sure that he understood that he had to have an unconditional love. So the first point I have here this morning is love cannot be explained. You know, the Web Webster's Dictionary says uh, love is uh, the feeling experienced when one is strongly attached or deeply devoted to another. A poet and a philosopher, preacher and all that, but they, they can't define love, you know. Love is just something that we just cannot fathom, you know. It's something that, like I said, God is love, and we have to realize that. Elizabeth Browning wrote, How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. There's no rational explanation that we can cut, wrap our little brains around when we read John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but everlasting life. We, you know, we have a hard time you know, we all know that song, uh, that, that verse. You know, we see it all the time. We, we think about it. But stop and really think about what he's saying. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son for us that we'll live forever with him in glory. You know, it's just so hard to, to explain what love is. Secondly, we need to uh, experience love. Love needs to be experienced. Only experience in love can we really understand what love is. Stop and think about if you tried to explain a sunset to somebody who's blind. Right. That'd be next to impossible to try to explain that. Well, see, that's the way love is. It's hard to just say it. You know, Brother Jerry was saying, you know, he loves Sister Reba. It's not just verbal. He shows it. You know, husbands and wives, we, we've got to show love too you know it's not just something we say it's like that joke i heard one time about the, the man said that uh you know when they first got married he told her that he loved her and, and if it ever changed he'd let her know you know you got to tell your spouse you love them you know we've got to do that every day all the time and so many times people with the, the neglect family members you know so brings out to us so much whatever we sing in our nursing home and we, we see the folks that are there. And so many times people in these nursing homes are just, the, the, the children are just dropping them off and leaving them there. Yeah. Never see them again. Yeah. They're neglected. That's terrible to do that to your family, to your folks. You know, that's something that, and, and you know, we, my wife's brother's in the nursing home, you know, and we make sure we keep tabs of them just about every day. Yeah. You know, we make sure he has, uh, he's cared for, he, and he, uh, problems that he has, you know, we address them, we talk to the management of the nursing home, and he says himself, there's so many people there that they never see their family, and they're really at the will of the CNAs and the management there as to how they're taken care of. You see, with Tommy, he's taken care of through, you know, us watching him and making sure that, you know, things are taken care of, so, you know, it is something that we have to experience love, you know, love is it has to be experienced. And non-Christians just can't understand that. They, they can't understand how when you get saved and you have Jesus in your life, you have an unconditional love given to you through the Father. Amen. And you have a peace that passes all understanding. Amen. People are, in this day and time, things are just terrible. Mm -hmm. And people are just freaking out. People are on the edge of explosion, you know, just wanting to harm other people, want to fight, road rage and all that. It's all because they don't have any peace. Right. You know, we, we have our difficulties. You know, just because you get saved don't mean that you're not going to experience difficulties. You're not going to have trials and tribulations and problems. But because you're saved, you have that inner peace that passes all understanding and you can stop and really think about how blessed you are. Even though circumstances are, are you know, bad and all that, we can still realize how blessed we are. 1 John 1, uh, 4, 9, you can just write it in the margin of your Bible. It says, in this was manifested the love of God towards us, towards us because that God sent his son 
his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. That live, that, that's not just, you know, we're not just getting fire insurance when we get saved. Jesus said he'll give us life and give it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just for the time that we pass away. It's for every single day. So we can deal with problems that we come across. Love has to be expressed. You know, it's something that we have to show each other. We have to consciously, you know, let each other know as a family here at True Faith. We got to let people know that we love them. You know, when somebody walks in these doors, you know, we're a small church. We, we don't have a vestibule, you know, where people can kind of sneak in and walk in and sit in the back row and nobody see them. You walk in these doors, people know it. Yeah. And they, they feel weird, you know, because I've been there, you know, I've walked into other. I used to be a member of a mega church, you know, where I could hide right in the back and nobody even knows I was there. I come here and I was like, wow, I walk in the door, everybody looks at me, you know. Well, that, we have to stop and realize that's kind of awkward for somebody that's, you know, never been to church. But you know, we gotta make them feel welcome. We gotta greet them. And I thank the Lord for y'all and how loving you are when somebody does come up. First John 4 20 says, if a man say I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. And he hath that hath not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he may have not seen? You know, we, we, we have to love each other. Amen. God demonstrated his love on Calvary. You know, when he died on this old rugged cross, you know, I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, look at that cross. There's a vertical beam and there's a horizontal beam. On that cross, that vertical beam is for us in Jesus, for us to have that connection with him. But that horizontal beam is for all of us. We've got to love one another. We've got to be here for each other. We've got to help each other. We've got to stand in the gap for one another. You know, with so many people are, are missing from our churches today. So many times we, we, we have dozens of people that should be here this morning that aren't. But when they have a prayer request, they still contact me. They'll text me or one of our members, you know, hey, pray for so-and-so. We're going through this. So what do we do? We stand in the gap. They're not here physically, but we can still pray for them. Amen. We can still come on their behalf and bring that problem to the altar and pray for them. You know, true faith is known as a church that preaches the truth in love. You know, sometimes truth is kind of hard to take. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we can't be brow beaters and judgmental and tell people what they're doing wrong. They know what they're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. Our job as Christians is to love them to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Tell them the truth, but love them to Amen. Jesus. Amen. Don't try to throw the Bible down their throat and tell them how sorry they are. That's not going to do anything but just turn them away. We've got to love them to Jesus. God is the love that we need. And he is the source of that love that we need to turn to. You know, we have so much opportunity to get to tap into the power of God. We can tap into that love that he has. He's the source that we need. Amen. But just like these, electric, these light bulbs are on now, well, there's a source where that power is coming from. All we have to do is flip that switch on. These power, the lights are on, the air conditioners on, the heaters on, fans on, all because of that source. Well, the same thing with us as Christians. We have a source. All we have to do is tap into it. So many times we want to take things on our own. We want to do it ourselves. We want to take, you know, our problems and we want to handle it ourselves. We need to intervene in people's lives. We need to help people. We need to demonstrate love. I was reading uh, statistics about. Uh, Valentine's Day, over a one billion dollars is spent on chocolate. Mm -hmm. One billion dollars on cards. Two hundred eighteen million roses were sold just to try to demonstrate love. You know, it's great to to demonstrate love with things, but you know, it's the way we have to react to each other and the way we respond to each other. And I'm not saying I've got it all figured out. My wife is here this morning. She'll tell you I'm not perfect. And I know that. I, I mess up all the time. I say I'm sorry more times than I say anything else, I think, at home. You know, we all mess up. That's just life. But, you know, we got to show that love. You know, Jesus, he was our first Valentine, the Rose of Sharon. He's our love. He's the one that we can turn to. We need to tell God how much we love him because he first loved us. Stop and think about it. We were the enemy of God before we got saved. We didn't want nothing to do with God. 
I don't know about you, but I did not run to God whenever I was lost. I'd run away. But Jesus finally, you know, showed me I, I need to come to him. And I gave my life to him. And I, you know, that's what we have to do. We have to give our life to him. And if you're on listening online this morning, you have to give your life to Jesus this morning. Because Jesus is the best. He's the best love you're ever going to have. But God sent his best. Amen. You know, the flower company, you know, sending your best. No, Jesus is the best. You're not going to get anything better than that. Amen. This morning we sang that old hymn, Love Lifted Me. I thank Brother Roy and Brother Jerry and Sister Tammy for their ministry here in music. But, you know, this morning I, I was looking at the, uh, the, the, the lyrics to that. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the Master heard my despairing cry. And from the waters he lifted, safe am I. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. That's what we need. We need God's love. We can't lift ourselves out of the mess that we get into. We have to turn to Jesus. Nothing will, will help us at all. Love has to be reflected. You know, when you look at a mirror, you, look, you see yourself, obviously. Love has to be reflected. We have to show people love in everything we do. People need to know that they're loved. That's a, that's a big, big problem in this world nowadays. There's so much hate, yeah. so much animosity, so much getting even. That's, bad. that's not what we're about, folks. We're the children of a risen king. Amen. We need to show people the love of Jesus in everything we do. We need to show his love. As he gave it to us, we need to return it to him by telling others about Jesus. Right. And I've said so many times, you don't have to have a uh, you know, degree in Bible. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. Just tell people what Jesus did for you. Right. Sister Wanda was sharing a little bit about what the Lord did for her this morning. It's nothing that you know we have to memorize. It's just what we've been through. Yeah. We've, all been, we've all come down our own separate roads of how we came to Calvary. All we have to do is to share that with other people. We have to study his word. We have to read his word. We have to pray. You know, I've gone uh, through the Bible last year, and I want to go through it again this year, and I encourage y'all to do that. In January, I mentioned that to the church. You know, let's, let's read through the Bible. I just started uh, up to uh, Leviticus this morning, and, you know, it's just such a blessing to read through God's word. And, and just every time you do, things open up to you you never saw before. You ever had that happen? Yeah. Like, yes. Wow, where'd that come from? Yeah. I've read this verse a dozen times. I didn't know that was there. Yeah. Amen? Amen? But that just shows right there it's a living word. Yeah. There's something that Jesus wants to bring out of it to you. And so that's what he does, you know. I was reading uh, yesterday about how uh, God told Moses to, how he wants the tabernacle built and how he wants the uh, Holy of Holies built and all that and how he wants all this done in specific ways. And I got to thinking, you know what? We don't have to go through a priest. We don't have to go to somebody to come to Jesus. We can come directly to him to this altar. Mm -hmm. We don't have to go through any priest or anybody. We don't have to burn candles. We don't have to do any ceremonies. We don't have to slaughter animals. Right. Jesus is the Lamb of God. He died on our rugged cross for us. All we have to do is accept him as our Lord and Savior. And you know, so many times... We need to listen to the Word of God. How are you going to get to the Word? You need to listen to it. You need to come to church. I know that's a sensitive subject right now with all this COVID stuff going on, but we've got to be in the Word. Whether it's you know reading it, praying it, listening to it, coming to church, being with the family. You know, I've said so many times when somebody's missing, it's like going to a family reunion and Cousin Joe isn't there. It's like it's not, not, not a good family reunion because not everybody's there. Not so We're here for, what, almost two years now. We've had people missing in our fellowship. And it's like coming to a reunion with people missing. It's, it's just not, you know, it's, it's not any way to have a reunion. So we need to try to come to church. We need to learn his word. We need to realize that, you know, though Satan, he's, he's determined to cause us to 
you know, turn away from the Word. We've got to stay in the Word. We've got to stay prayed up. This old devil, he is determined to turn us away. As I said this morning in Sunday school, if Satan can tempt Jesus, who are we? You know, he, he'll tempt us. You know, and we got to be strong. We got to do like Jesus. We got to use the word to go against that temptation. Second Timothy 3.16 says that all scripture is inspired by God. It's profitable teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. You know, that's what we got to do. Somebody that falls short of something, we need to help straighten them out. You know, not, not be mean and hateful, but in love. You know, show them, you know, where they fell short. We need to rightly divide the word of God. We need to keep his commands. Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commands. Amen. We need to do that. We need to keep his commands. He wants us to worship him. He wants us to love him. And he deserves everything. Because he is our Lord and Savior. And we need to worship him with all we have. All our hearts, all our minds, all our soul, all our strength, everything we have. Amen. Quit putting our junk into stuff. It's going to burn up. You know, like hay and stuff. It's going to burn up one day. We need to set up treasures in heaven because that's where it's going to be there. Amen. It's going to be there forever. So this morning, that, that's basically what my message is. We need to stop and realize how important it is to love others, to show others the love of Jesus, to lead them to Calvary. You know, we're going through the book of Revelation in Sunday school, and we, we see how Revelation is just unfolding before our eyes. We're in the last days, folks. We're in the last of the last days. Jesus could come before I say amen tonight, this morning. He could come and rapture his church. But you know what? Why he's not? He's waiting for that one more soul to come to Jesus. He's being merciful. We're living in the time of grace right now. He's asking people to come to him. What's hindering you from coming to Jesus this morning? As we close, I asked Brother Roy if he would play something for invitation. I just want you to search your souls this morning. If you're listening online and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, stop and think about what you're doing. Stop and think about eternity. You know, every soul will live forever. But the question is, where's the destination? Every soul will live. But are you going to live in heaven with Jesus and worship him forever? Or are you going to go to hell? There's no middle ground. There's no, well, after I get a certain age and I'll get saved kind of thing. No. You don't know if you're going to hit your pillow tonight and see tomorrow or you're going to die tonight. We don't know that. The Bible says we're not given, you know, promise tomorrow. We need to give Jesus our hearts now. Christian, just be praying that Brother Roy plays.